Welcome back, CSC 200, to part two of EX12B form validation. And we're going to pick up with our gender selections and validate that our radio buttons are selected. We have three variables that represent the checked state. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make one more if statement. So I'm going to copy this species one, and I'll put it right before the else. Now remember to check everything. I'm going to say if gender. Now you might be thinking, well, do I put gender? What do I put here? We have three of them. How do I put three of them in here? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put three statements with an and in between here. We're going to say gender m if gender m equals equals, and we're going to put false. That means if it's not checked. So if this is not checked, so if gender m equals equals false, and and, we, and in JavaScript, we use double ampersands to be end. And we're going to put this all in the parentheses. I tried it another time with three separate parentheses, and it didn't work. They have to be in the same parentheses. So if you look at the little samples, there's some samples here that have it uh, all together. So they put the ampersands in here inside one parentheses. So I had to double check that out because I just had to refresh myself with JavaScript. So everything's inside here. And so what you could do now is just copy these, and I'm going to paste that there. And this one's going to be gender f equals false. And I'm going to put another ampersand. And then the last one is going to be gender O. And I just put a 0, so make sure you put an O. So these are showing up in red. All the variables are showing up in red. So gender M equals equals false. And gender F equals equals false. And gender O equals equals false. If these conditions are all met, and when you use and, that means they all three of them have to be met. You can't use or, because then it wouldn't work. It would just be if one of them is not checked. So if all are not checked. Then we're going to return false, and then we'll get some kind of alert here that'll say gender must be select. I'll just put check since we're kind of using that word there. So I'll put gender must be checked. So we'll leave that like that. I'll capitalize G must be checked. So that way these are all false. So if you don't put anything, if nothing is checked for gender, you have to check it. And then if it's that means if it's not that, if they're all true, if these if these are all true, then it's going to move on to here. So if these are all false, it's going to return false and it's going to make that alert. That's not going to be the case if you fill it out. If there if something's checked, then it should work out. And we'll see if it works out. Let's save this and see if this works. Now, I think we're okay here. So remember, we had to make three for gender for the three IDs, and we had to say they're checked. And then we just made one other statement here, and we put three statements inside the if combined with ands to make sure. So let's see if this works. And actually, let me show you something. I just tried this last time, and I got it to add Terry Tuna. I was just you know, I was practicing because I want to make sure it worked before I started recording, and it worked. Now, if you didn't want Terry Tuna in there, like maybe I don't want to add Terry Tuna because I didn't even add Terry Tuna yet. I could go in here and into PHP my admin and hit delete. Now the only problem is it will skip over that number. That was number 13 in there. So if I go to characters again, the next one is going to be 14. Auto increment already knows that it used a 13. So if I wanted the next auto increment to be 13 and continue where I left off, like, like I was like, oh, I didn't mean to put that in there, it's going to skip over and go to 14. So what you could do, and I open this up, I have all these tabs open, this is under SQL, and this is just auto increment, and if you just did alter table, if you ran this right in PHP my admin, now you don't have to do this, I'm just showing that if you ever had to delete one and delete one of your numbers, you could do this, but you could go into SQL and just make a quick query that says alter table, and it would be obviously characters, and it would have to be spelled right. There's our characters and auto increment. And we're not doing 100. We're doing, it'll be whatever the next one is. So it's kind of resetting. So I'm going to put it to 13 so that the next one we do is going to be 13. And then I'll hit go. And you won't really see anything happen. And you won't see anything in your database. But I'll just go to browse here. And that's 12. So the next one should be 13 from doing that. So I deleted it. And then I did an auto increment. And I restarted the number at 13. So the next one I do, if I go back here, now let's just try if it works. First of all, if I hit submit, I should get a message about first name. And there it is. And if I put in a first name, I'll do Fanny. Now if I go here, it says last name must be pulled out. I'll put Flipper. And then I'll hit this, and then it says Gender. And I must have screwed something up because I don't... Uh, let me just check what I did here. Uh, oh, I, I got rid of value here for some reason. Let me... Let me, let me do that. For some reason, I was messing around with stuff. I got rid of value. I'm glad I checked that before I did it. So that's why that I didn't do it out of order. I just, for some reason, I took out value when I was doing something. So let me save that. And let me just go back. And I'll try it again. Now, we already know the first two were Fanny, Flipper. Now, I should get a thing about species. And species must be filled out. So the dolphin. Now, what should happen now, this is all the work we just did. It should say, 
gender must be checked. So let's see if this works. Gender must be checked. And Fanny Flipper is a female, so we're going to choose female. And we're going to hit Submit. This should add Fanny Flipper to the database. So we'll hit Submit. And there's Fanny Flipper. And it's she's 13 because, remember, I auto-incremented. So there she is. And then I'll go check my database. Now it's not here yet because you have to refresh. Hit Ignore. And now we have Fanny Flipper, and she's 13. So that worked. So this all worked. It was a little little tricky for using the gender this time, but I'm glad I kind of worked through and did that. I could have skipped over it and said, let's just do a fill in the blank. But uh, we got that to work, and now we can do that. So whatever we do for the next one, we could use the same code. And again, just to review that again, in our HTML form, we put an on submit equals quotes return validate form. We put that in there. So we put the func this is the function name. And also the return statement is all in quotes, and it's in an on submit property. And that's all we had to do there. And then what we did for our JavaScript, in between script tags, we did first we, we were going to say we had four variables, but we ended up having to make six variables because we needed three for the gender. So we have gender M, gender F, gender O, and they're based on the three IDs for gender. And instead of dot value, dot value, dot value, it's dot checked. So we're just checking if they're checked. We're not checking any value because nobody's entering a value. That's the problem. Here you can enter a value. Here you can't. You're just checking it. So we're going to do check there. Although I didn't go back. Maybe if you did value, that might work, but I don't think so. So we're going to leave that as checked. And all we had to do is do these if statements that actually go through and make sure that we do this with ampersands in here, double ampersands, so that it checks if all three are unchecked. So if all three are unchecked, you didn't uncheck anything, it's not going to let the form be submitted until you check one of them. And then, because if you check one of them, then this will, will turn out, this won't validate, and it'll just move on. Because if this is the case, no, it'll skip over this and go to return true, and it'll fill out the form. And then it'll run that validate form, and it'll submit all our information that we need. Now, one other thing that I just want to point out here that, that you, can, you can do, if you put like a little, um, you know, if you wanted to write something on your form, I'll just do it for one, and I'll just put a little, under the H1, I'll just put a little paragraph here, and I'll say P... And I'll say ID equals alert. And I have to put that in quotes. And it's putting a closing tag here, which is actually what I want. I'll just put them right side by side. So I'm putting an extra little paragraph, and I'm giving it an ID of alert. And then what I'll do is I'll go in here, and I'll give a alert. Now, this means an ID. When you use the pound sign in here, that means that it's an ID name. So I'm going to say alert, and then I'm going to do these things. Now, I'm not sure where it's coming up blue, unless it doesn't like that, that name unless it's just coloring it blue because it's an ID, but I'm using alert for that. Hopefully that'll work out okay. So PID equals alert, and I'm gonna say alert, and all I'm gonna do here is say color, and I'll just do red. That should be fine. I should just need color red. So I'm gonna put an alert there, and I'll just do this for one just to show it, and then we'll be done with this. And instead of alert, what I can do is I can actually do something called inner HTML. It's a way to write something. So what I'll do here is I'll copy this, and I'll put this in here, and I'll just do it for this one, and I'll paste it. Now, it, we don't want first. We actually want what we just called it, alert, because that's the ID name. So we call it alert ID name, and we even have uh, an ID, a CSS for it. So it's making it red. It's I'm getting it by ID, and I'm using alert. That's why I made it an ID. We're going to do something called inner HTML equals, and we're going to give it a value. So we could leave both here, or you can get this out of here, but I'm going to say inner HTML equals please fill out name. We're, we're giving another kind of instruction here saying, okay, go to document.elementById alert and use the inner HTML property and use this value of please fill out name. And when it does that, it's actually going to make it red. So let's see if this works. Another just little quick thing at the end here and trying that out. And you could do that instead of alerts. I'm doing it in both of them, so it should do both. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go back here, and I'm just going to go back, and I'm going to refresh. And it should only work for this one. So if I hit Submit, it should do two things. It should show me an alert, and it should show me some red message right above here, like a paragraph. I think it's going to be over here. So let's see what happens. And when I close that, that showed up. So you can probably do one or the other. So it's telling me fill out name. Now, the only problem with doing this, we'd also have to do something to make this go away, which we can do, but that gets into a lot of more JavaScript. But instead of having an alert window pop up, 
you could have something show up on a page. I'm sure there's pros and cons of both ways, but this way we'd have to do more JavaScript to make this go away. So then when you kind of activated another, if you fill it out and you moved on to another window, you could make that go away, but that's a lot more JavaScript just to do that. But that might be better for whatever you're doing, but again, we're just dealing with a form here. So that's not our, our main focus is databases, but we're trying to deal with forms here a little bit as far as web design kind of stuff. So. So that would happen there. So then if you did this, even if you filled out like Steve, whatever we're gonna do, Steve Squid or something, and, and then you went on, it, it's gonna give me a alert about the next one, but it'll, it won't make that go away. That would be something else we'd have to deal with. All I did was just make something that writes out in our HTML, document.get element by ID. That's the way we get something. And we made a new ID called alert, and it's writing out inner HTML and saying, please fill out name. Now, we did that with an alert. You could get rid of the alert and do them all like this if you want. But, again, it's hard to get them to go away. So you could leave both. If you want to try that out, fine. If not, not a big deal. But, again, all I did was add a new empty paragraph. See, there's nothing there. So that's why it gets written to that paragraph. And then also I just made a little ID style for it that makes it red. So that's how you target an ID up here in CSS. You use a pound sign. You use a dot for classes pound sign for IDs. And that's all we did there. So I think that's good. We're done with this SpongeBob stuff. I know I said last time we'd be done with SpongeBob, but we wanted to validate a form here and we could certainly use this code for any other things that we work on for our input form that we're going to do for making a contact database. So that's it. That's the end of our form validate called 12B. And all you have to do is just under 12B, just put a message in your comments that you're done with this one and then I'll come in and I'll just check this under your index file and then when you're done you can close this up you can close up all this stuff you can uh, close up your you could log out of this I guess you could log out of your PHP my admin you could close that up you could close this file up because you should already have that saved you obviously can close all your tabs here when you come back to here close all your files here if you want to get out of MySQL down at the bottom, just type in quit and hit re enter, and that'll log you out of there, or at least it'll stop your MySQL, so you can close that up. And then finally, you can go here and close your container and then log out.